Here's a story from Iran that illustrates, yet again, just how stupid Western politicians and journalists are, especially when they tell us about Islam. We're going to read about a journalist who was just executed. Then we're going to read the Quran verse that justifies his execution. Then we're going to try to understand how Western politicians and journalists could be so incredibly stupid that they would quote the exact same passage to convince us that Islam is a religion of peace. AP reports. AP here is the Associated Press, not the apostate prophet. Iran on Saturday executed an exiled journalist over his online work that helped inspire nationwide economic protests in 2017, a little more than a year after authorities tricked him into traveling to Iraq, where he was abducted. So this journalist had fled to France, but the Iranian government tricked him into traveling to Iraq, and that's where they kidnapped him and brought him back to Iran. Ruhala Zam, 47, was one of several opposition figures successfully seized by Iranian intelligence operatives abroad in recent months as Tehran struggles under the weight of U.S. sanctions. Kidnapping and executing Zam, who lived in Paris under what Iran described as French government protection, likely will further chill an already scattered Iranian opposition across the West. It also comes as Iran tries to pressure France and other European nations over the collapsed atomic accord in the waning days of President Donald Trump's administration. The execution drew immediate international condemnation. This is a barbarous and unacceptable act, the French foreign ministry said in a statement, which also condemned the execution as a grave blow to freedom of expression and media freedom in Iran. The German foreign ministry expressed shock about the circumstances of Zam's conviction and what it described as his abduction from abroad. Canada condemned Zam's execution, saying journalists perform essential work and that Ottawa would hold Iran accountable for its violations of human rights. Diana el of Amnesty International said Zam's execution is a deadly blow to freedom of expression in Iran and shows the extent of the Iranian authorities' brutal tactics to instill fear and deter dissent. Iranian state television referred to Zam as the leader of the riots in announcing his execution by hanging early Saturday. In June, a court sentenced Zam to death, saying he had been convicted of corruption on Earth, a charge often used in cases involving espionage or attempts to overthrow Iran's government. That's what I wanted you to see. He was sentenced to death for corruption on Earth, and this charge is often used in cases involving espionage or attempts to overthrow Iran's government. It's actually used in various Muslim countries to execute people for all kinds of crimes. So, where does this charge of corruption on earth come from? Well, it comes from the Quran in the exact same passage that politicians and journalists quote to show us that Islam doesn't allow killing. For years, whenever there was an Islamic terrorist attack, politicians and journalists would assure us that the terrorists had violated the clear and peaceful teachings of the Quran because the Quran claims that if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. For some reason, they would leave out the fact that this was a Jewish teaching taken directly from the Talmud and that the very next verse in the Quran commands Muslims to kill people. Let's read the passage, Surah 5, verses 32 to 33. For that cause we decreed for the children of Israel, that part always gets edited out when politicians and journalists quote this verse, this is something that the Jews of Muhammad's time were teaching. It's from Mishnah Sanhedrin. For that cause we decreed for the children of Israel that whosoever killeth a human being for other than manslaughter or corruption in the earth, it shall be as if he had killed all mankind. And whoso saveth the life of one, it shall be as if he had saved the life of all mankind. Our messengers came unto them of old with clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty, but afterwards, lo, many of them became prodigals in the earth. 
So, 532 was a teaching for the Jews. The next verse is a teaching for Muslims. The only reward of those who make war upon Allah and His Messenger and strive after corruption in the land will be that they will be killed or crucified or have their hands and feet on alternate sides cut off or will be expelled out of the land. Such will be their degradation in the world, and in the hereafter, theirs will be an awful doom. How in the world does a person make war upon Allah? By going against his messenger and by striving after corruption in the land. And what's the penalty for causing corruption in the land? Well, it depends on the severity of the corruption, but the possible penalties include execution, crucifixion, dismemberment, and exile. Notice how dangerous this is. The extremely vague crime of causing corruption in the land carries some very harsh penalties. People are being executed across the Muslim world for causing corruption in the land. When Al-Qaeda would justify terrorist attacks against Western targets, they would say that Western nations had caused corruption in Muslim lands. Even Muslim YouTubers like Ali Dawa, when they explain why they want millions of ex-Muslims to be publicly executed, describe apostasy as a form of corruption in the land. There's a reason why there's a capital punishment, because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, corruption in the land by spreading it, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt, and we're proud of that. Surah 5, verse 33 of the Quran has provided the justification for countless executions and countless terrorist attacks over the past 14 centuries. If you leave Islam, you're spreading corruption in the land. If you criticize Islam, you're spreading corruption in the land. If you preach a non-Muslim religion, you're spreading corruption in the land. And yet, whenever a Muslim actually obeys Allah's command to kill or dismember those who commit the vague crime of causing corruption in the land, some idiot ignores 533, goes instead to 532, leaves out the part about 532 being for the children of Israel, and pretends that Islam condemns violence. Meanwhile, Muslim governments are kidnapping and executing journalists for causing corruption in the land. Western leaders condemn the executions, but refuse to condemn the verse that calls for the executions. We condemn you, government of Iran, for executing that man, for causing corruption in the land. But we praise and honor the book that commanded you to execute him. And if some genius comes along and says, Hey, if we want to stop the executions, why don't we show them that the book that demands the executions comes from the most obvious false prophet in history? The response is, no, we can't do that because it might hurt their feelings. Ladies and gentlemen, as a rule, when people are slaughtering unbelievers and critics and journalists, that's a really good time to stop worrying about hurting their feelings.